the TV sports series had one goal, to make you feel like you're playing a sports game being broadcast live on television. I always thought that was a unique concept as it tried to stand out from the traditional. TV sports football saw life on many platforms and computers where it garnered rather good praise, eventually hitting the Turbo Graphics in 1990 where it didn't. <laughs> I always loved that opening screen. And truthfully, the music here isn't so bad either. Now, let's talk options. When you press run, you have four major selections. Exhibition allows you to play actual all-out games with no effect on league standings. League, therefore, allows you to play a full season with continuously updated standings and stats. After each game, you will receive a password so you can continue the season from where you left off, which is always a good thing in a sports title. With both of these options, you can select one player, two player, or teammates for up to five players. That is, if you have a turbo tap and enough controllers. Obviously, we are not NFL licensed here, so we have teams like the Sharks, the Buzzards, the Tidal Waves, and the Blizzards. Mm-mm, Dairy Queen Blizzards. I... Oh, <clears throat> sorry. Clipboard allows you to scout the entire league, evaluating your personnel, and even taking a peek at the opposition. Ah yes, good old Frosty Johnson. <laughs> He's cool. All of the players are graded in four categories on a scale from 1 to 10, with different attributes based on their position. Finally, practice allows you to tune up your offensive play without being hassled by the defense. If you're new to the game, this is a great way to get the hang of the controls and techniques. Ha ha ha, you can't catch me! <laughs> oh, I, I get it. Practice mode. <clears throat> My copy of TV Sports Football came with a fold-out card, titled The Quick Start Menu, giving you shortcuts on everything. After selecting a play mode and team, we meet up with good old Turk McGill, our friendly TV announcer who <laughs> flaps his mouth in strange ways while you read the text on the right of the screen. He sets everything up as well as revealing who won the coin toss. Damn it, I wanted to participate in the coin toss. Notice aside from a good amount of options, there is nothing exciting or showcase worthy setting up a game. It all just kind of starts in a somewhat boring fashion. In fact, a game ends in the same way, even with Turk's floppy jowls. <laughs> Sadly, this is a trait that will continue. After the first kickoff, a menu will appear asking you to choose a formation and play. The number of plays are fairly limited overall, so it doesn't take long to figure them out. It's a rather small playbook shared across all the teams, which is good if you're looking for something a bit simple. The game uses the flashing uniform system we've all seen before, where the ball handler's full uniform that you control will flash. And you can even swap controllable players at times. For example, you can take control of a different defender before the snap. Now, controlling the pass is very important to master. If we check out the handy dandy quick start card, one, quarterback must be pointing downfield. Two, point the quarterback's arm in the direction of the intended receiver. Three, to release the ball, press button one and keep your finger on the button. 4. Watch for the small X that leads out in front of the ball. This X is where the ball will land, and you release the button when it's where you want it to be. <sighs> I commend CinemaWare for trying something unique here, but for me, this just never felt right. And honestly, I could practice forever and still never get it down. Yep, I mostly throw incomplete passes. The computer isn't bad at it, of course. <laughs> It would be just easier for me to throw in the towel. Where I had a little more luck is in my running game. Finding holes here and there was key. The problem is waiting for the offensive line to create that gap. 
it can be a heck of a wait. In fact, TV sports football as a whole is just extremely slow, which really brings down the fun factor. It's not super easy to even get a first down, but when you do, celebrate. Rhino, first down. I will say it is pretty easy to set up field goals and kick the ball. This is my favorite part of the game. Not that the game overall is a graphical mess. I mean, the characters on the field are well designed and detailed. The animation isn't too bad and the colors are pretty good. That behind the player view, I like it. It's good. On the flip side, there isn't much variety in players' jerseys <laughs> or the players themselves, and I wish there were more unique angles to mix it up. You do get some realistic grunts and groans with the tackles. And some of the speech is actually quite clear. Red, 59. Not bad for the old TG-16. But otherwise, the sounds don't really knock your socks off. <laughs> Second down. At the end of the day, TV sports football isn't the worst TV sports title, and I did have a little fun with it, but it's just so bland. Hi, Bob. There are a few fun moments and unique details, but it mostly is just a traditional 11 on 11 football game without much helping it to stand out. And with a passing game that isn't the greatest, along with an overall average presentation, I mean, there isn't even a halftime show. <laughs> okay. It doesn't do justice to the old pigskin. Encroachment. TV sports football reveals that lack of polish as other games do in this series. And, from what I've read, it is also watered down from the computer versions, which were a little more interesting. Sadly, I can't quite recommend this one. But I can sure recommend a blizzard. And you know the kind that I mean. <laughs> <laughs>